I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. I want to sort of look back over the last couple of weeks here at satellite drive precipitation. So this is January 19th through February the 3rd. As you look at this particular map, just take note of the color bar over here. You notice that when you get up into these colors, we're talking about between 6 and 10 inches of rainfall. Now what I thought might be instructive here is if I just removed everything below 2 inches. So now we start to see where we've had the three, four, five plus inch rainfall amounts. And some of these areas have had some incredibly heavy amounts. I'm talking about parts of Paraguay, southern Brazil. Look at this. And the multiple thunderstorm complexes that have come through between Cordoba over towards Santa Fe. You know, this particular region in Argentina has seen some very heavy rainfall. We've been much drier in eastern Brazil. And at times we've seen more routine uh, uh, monsoonal flow in parts of Mato Grosso as they're trying to harvest this first crop, which, as we've seen some reports, um, just due to the delays in planting is coming out a bit late. Now from there I would like just to show you a video that came out of Paraguay uh, earlier this week of some of the flooding. So this is an area that I think has seen over 10 inches of rainfall as of late and so there are places where the heavy rainfall is impacting the crops but certainly impacting the livelihoods of our uh, friends down in South America here. So just uh, wanted to bring this to your attention as it's been a rough go of it where this stalled out frontal boundary has really hammered parts uh, uh, right in through here of southern Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, that area. Now this morning, what we see is there's a low sitting off the coast. There's still some heavy rains in area in this area here, but high pressure will build, build in behind this. And if you just watched over the next several days here, uh, it's going to be dry in that region. So high pressure cleared that out, and we're going to get a chance through the weekend to really dry down here. One of the things that the zero z runs did bring back in, and we're getting here into Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, and evening, is another weak low pressure system that's going to go toward Buenos Aires right down here. And as it cuts through, it could be bringing in uh, some heavy rains to this area and a frontal boundary here early next week that could bring in some storms uh, into parts of Argentina. But as you see, it seems to be more closer to the Andes Mountains. So we could go through at least another five uh, to maybe a, a week of going over dry in this region that has been so exceptionally wet. Now with that, we've pushed much of the heavier rain, as you see here, stretching from eastern Brazil, getting up into Brazil's northern and central growing areas. And I do see more normal monsoonal rainfall overall in the forecast as we look out over the next um, 7 to 10 days. So total accumulated precipitation, you can see what I just mentioned here. This will be the area where we, when we look at this in inches, we're talking about easily a, a 2 to 5 inch plus uh, week here coming up, but much drier farther to the south. And there's the evidence of that low we talked about coming through uh, over the weekend and early next week. Looking at this same map and comparing it to normal, these would be the drier conditions that this area needs to, to dry out after how it, all that extremely heavy rain that we had seen lately. Some questions I have would be, as the rains do come into this area and look to be above average on precipitation, what does that do to the um, harvesting pace uh, in this area of, of Mato Grosso, getting over toward Bahia and, and then into the eastern part of Brazil's growing area? Could it impact it and slow it down a little bit more? Uh, I'm not really sure, but it's something I'll be watching out for. Now, as we look longer term, just a couple of things happening with the tropics. The MJO moved over to phase six and is cutting over into phase seven. When you look historically, phase six and seven for South America uh, aren't really strongly correlated with our precipitation patterns. But the question remains, does it eventually jump out into phase eight, one, and two? It seems to want to get stuck into phase seven for a while, and this is probably due to what's going on with La Nina. But just a reminder, if we go to phase eight and phase one, that's very very wet for Brazil's uh, eastern and northern and central growing areas and much drier to the south. So when we get down into to, to like uh, southern Brazil and Argentina. So at the same time, just paying attention to the Antarctic Oscillation, it has been building back toward positive values and will likely be in positive territory for much of the next uh, probably 10 to 15 days. And when you correlate that against precipitation, it tends to be wetter in this area but drier uh, as you get down into Argentina and pockets of southern Brazil. The wet anomalies here are really backed up against the, the, the mountains. So again, the blues would be the negative correlation, the warmer colors being the positive correlation with precipitation. So when I blend all this together, it, it starts to make sense that some of our longer range models, for example, the GFS, has begun to show more drier signals here, as you can see, wetter along the mountains, uh, but uh, still, the GFS has got a dry pocket up here in Mato Grosso, which isn't really seen in the long-range European weeklies. So what time are we looking at here? This is the 30 days from uh, February 10th to March the 10th. 
and the European is really picking up consistently on a dry bias. Now, we'll get a new update of this to late tonight into tomorrow morning on Friday, and I want to see if it continues to do that, and I'll report to you next Monday if I have a, a kind of longer-term concerns about very dry conditions in Argentina moving throughout the end of February into the beginning of March. But it does appear, as you saw from the analog support, uh, and the, excuse me, the teleconnection support that we could see what are conditions here where we're trying to plant a safrina crop and get a, uh, a first crop of soybeans out. So this is what I wanted to present to you for South America today, and I hope it uh, kind of offers some guidance here. But we'll watch it carefully, and I'll report back to you on Monday, all right? Thank you so much.